At the 2010 US Open, Nadal held serve 95% of the time and routinely hit 135 mile an hour serves. This is his service motion in 2009. Pay close attention to the racket positioning, the elbow, and also how his shoulders are aligned in that power position. Now, any knowledgeable coach would look at this and say, there's quite a few things that Rafa could change if he wants to maximize the power potential on his serve. Now, this is his serve in 2010 at the US Open. Notice how much he has improved that power position. He's also dropping that left shoulder much more and the whole motion looks much smoother and there's no glitches, there's no breaks in the mechanics. These changes allowed Rafa to actually serve so much better at that US Open. And as we can see in this footage where he's warming up for the final, look at how smooth and effortless the entire motion is. Even the way he positions his feet and that weight transfer from the front leg to the back leg and then back onto the front leg, we can see how smooth it is and how quickly the motion is completed. Now this is the man who helped Rafa in 2010, Oscar Boraz, also known as the serve doctor in Spain. Here he is working on developing a better throwing motion with Rafa, just throwing tennis balls from that power position, which is so crucial for having a good powerful serve. Now here he is with Uncle Tony and Rafa, watching slow motion footage of some of the best servers in the world and comparing it to Rafa's serve. In particular, they're discussing the positioning of the racket head and the wrist in that power position. And as you can see, they're going back and forth on what they see the differences are. In this side-by-side -side comparison, we can see the differences between the shoulder alignment between Shelton and Rafa's serve back in 2009, the elbow and how much Shelton gets over the baseline with his hips. Now this is Rafa working from that power position. Oscar is setting his racket in what he thinks is the ideal power position. And he's also telling Rafa the differences between having the racket more on edge, so more supinated, versus having the racket a little bit more flatter in that power position, like a Roger Federer. Raf is also discussing the wrist positioning and what he feels more comfortable with. And as the lesson progresses, we'll see that Raf actually starts to take on board what Oscar is saying and starts to make these small adjustments and sees the benefits of doing so. And as we can see here, after every serve, Oscar is once again showing him what he thinks Raf should be trying to look to do on his serve, especially with the racket drop and with the elbow alignment in that power position. Now here he is going back and forth with Uncle Tony and now once again correcting Rafa's serve from that elbow extended position into that 90 degree angle when he reaches that power position. And this is such an important lesson for anyone who's trying to improve their serve, especially players who are struggling in that power position. You don't have to do a full motion. You can do a half serve, develop that power position and then take it from there, progress it from the starting position on the serve. Now, once again, this is a player who's already won Grand Slams, but he's going back to the basics, the fundamentals. Now, this is quite an interesting drill because we see that Rafa is now serving from that service line and working predominantly on that shoulder over shoulder cartwheel motion, which is so important to get the right side of your uh, body engaged if you're a left-handed player. So when he gets into that power position, Rafa's back shoulder should be dropping down and the right shoulder should be rising up, as we see here with Ben Shelton on the left. And Rafa wasn't doing this very well in 2009, but at the 2010 US Open, we can see that he improved this dramatically. He actually had that left shoulder dropping down, he had his hips over the baseline, and then he was exploding upwards into that point of contact using that shoulder over shoulder motion. And at this point in the lesson, Oscar is now discussing getting Rafa's hips to go over the baseline, as we see with most big servers, including Ben Shelton here on the left. Now, this is such an important thing for anyone who uses that pinpoint stance. You can use it with the platform, but it is uh, easier to do with the pinpoint stance. You have your body weight on the back leg, then you transition onto the front leg and you get your hips to lean across that baseline. This will increase the body weight behind that service motion, making it faster, but also making it a much heavier serve. So this is what Oscar is trying to teach Rafa at this point in the lesson. Now soon you'll see that they progress on to discussing the positioning of the ball toss and where Rafa should be tossing his ball in relation to his body. Now as we can see, Oscar demonstrates a serve. He's got actually quite a good serve for a player of his height. Now this is where they start discussing that positioning of where should Rafa be tossing that ball because Rafa had the tendency 
to toss the ball quite far back. So in line with the baseline or slightly inside the court. And here Oscar is actually showing him that it should be maybe one or two feet inside the baseline so that he can then get his body weight into that serve and have a much more powerful, aggressive serve. Now that is basically the lesson in its entirety, all the different drills that Oscar has done. Now I don't want to discuss in this video anything that happened with Rafa and Oscar going back and forth with the court cases, what they said in the media about each other. This is not the lesson for that. This is all about the technique. This is all about the changes that Rafa made in that 2010 season and how he developed the best serve, in my opinion, throughout his entire career. At that US Open, had he continued to serve like that throughout the rest of the remainder of his career up until this point, I believe Rafa would be sitting now on 28 or 29 Grand Slam titles. As we see, Rafa went back to a different motion. He had the elbow further away from his body. It wasn't as smooth. The ideal power position wasn't there anymore. So was it a case of him losing it because of bad habits creeping back? Was it a case of him having some injuries with that serve and then changing back to what he felt was a safer serve for his body? We don't really know. Only Rafa knows, only his team knows. We will just be speculating. But in my opinion, had Rafa kept this technique throughout the remainder of his career and playing players like Federer, playing players like Djokovic, I think he's holding his service games much easier. I think against the lower ranked players, he's absolutely steamrolling through service games. And I don't see any benefit of going back to his old motion. Now, if it was a case of spin, you could slightly adjust the grip. You could still keep the more energy efficient motion but then slightly adjust the grip. You could still impart good slice with the motion he was using during that 2010 US Open. So I think personally, there's more a case of him having a bad habit that then crept back in and not working on actually changing those bad habits because when you're playing tournaments week in, week out, it's almost impossible to change technique. You need a time, you need a block where you're not competing, you need a block where you're not playing matches and you don't have the pressure of actually, I've got a match next week, my serve has to be ready. Whatever it is that I'm doing on my motion, keep it. I've got a match next week, I have to play. If you have two or three months to actually work on your serve, completely change the technique, add some new things, take away some bad habits, that's the time that you can make those huge changes and I think Rafa playing at the highest level, maybe he just didn't have that option. Maybe he didn't have those two or three months where he could just go and work on his serve, correct the technique, and maybe he didn't see the benefits of doing so. Now, what do you guys think? Leave your comments under this video. I'll be interested to read all of them. I tried to reply to all of them. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. So many uh, people are watching our videos, but they aren't subscribed. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell.